our use of natural resources can be staggering. Paper is just one example. Worldwide, 200 million tons of paper are used each year. Each night, the world's presses print 250 million newspapers. They are delivered to us through the night by some of the biggest companies on Earth. It's a one-way system from forest to front door, and there's no equivalent to return yesterday's paper once it's been read. The one-way system can affect humans, too. In Africa, national debts total three times the value of exports. So cash crops replace food. Shelled groundnuts make up half the Gambia's export earnings. Groundnut oil adds a further quarter. But the value of groundnut oil on the international market dropped by 60% between 1975 and 1987. Sesame is a much better crop. West African rainfall has dropped by half, but sesame is drought tolerant. Its seed produces oil as a cash crop for the local market, generating a local economy. The waste husks make good animal fodder, reducing the impact of grazing on the land, so the villagers benefit as well. Worldwide, farming ecology has changed. Force feeding means a chick reaches adult weight at 42 days, not the natural 84. The markets keep prices low. So the only responses are to cover a wider area and risk turning it into semi-desert or increase intensity. 25% of world grain production feeds cattle that no longer graze. Between 1960 and 1980, the world cow population doubled, surpassing even the human growth rate. The modern world is now dominated by our subspecies. Humans numbered one billion in 1825, two billion in 1925, three in 1960, four in 1975, five in 88, and we're heading for six. It's a steepening curve with 95% of the increase in the South. A big family is an insurance for old age, but like the Mayans, people here are living beyond the carrying capacity. How does that feel? <laughs> Right, now what is the meaning of HCF? Yes, Bauka? Highest common factor. Good, highest common factor. Clap for him. Very good. 
Dengra primary school la jange. Mangi jange ci school bi. English. Mangi am fukki ata ñet. Mangi jange ci school bi English. Max science, social study, play football. There are a lot of factors in the population crisis, but it's certainly stimulated by external development. These people aren't wantonly destroying their world, but it's changing too fast for them. Rainfall is declining, soil erosion reduces crops, and towns offer the potential for greater earnings. Their society is changing from low impact to high impact, the northern model. It's not even just a question of birth rate. Around the world, people live longer than they did in 1960. Combine that with increased demand on resources, and you have a second population crisis in the north. Consumers are the newest human group. Americans represent 5% of the population, but consume 35% of the world's resources. 250 million individuals have the same impact as 15 billion Africans. The only solution to a longevity crisis is to reduce the impact of each individual. The consumer's world has lost diversity. The same food and drink is sold in every country on Earth. And if we are the managers of the planet, a look at our accounting system shows we leave a lot out. Take aluminium, the stuff of sports cars, aeroplanes, and rubbish. Aluminium takes a lot of smelting. Once refined, it's recyclable. But since neither mining damage or air pollution are costed, that's deemed uneconomic. The world is ruled by gross domestic product. This means manufacturing and services, but the ex-colonies in the south also sell their resources cheap. Commodity markets tie the two different worlds together. Now, ore from India builds cars in Japan. In the 1980s, fish exports from the south doubled, bringing wild populations to the brink of collapse. The seas are empty as conquistador and consumer combine. Brazil has exploiter and exploited in one country. Aiming for a high-impact northern economy includes damming sluggish rivers. The dams flood huge areas, silt up and generate electricity that's more expensive than solar power. But they do help to light up Rio. It's a multi-million dollar policy with no benefit for the average Brazilian. Counting rainforest as wasteland can really help the economy. A rainforest tree stores all the nutrients in the forest and may be home to a hundred different species. But it's not worth a pair of Levi's until it becomes timber and suddenly appears on the balance sheet.
Japan has preserved its woodlands more effectively than Europe or the USA. But this creates a huge market for imported timber, and many nations will sell their natural assets for yen. There's a global imbalance on the balance sheet. Economists say we now have a better standard of living. It's time to look at the human animal. Even wealthy people live under stress. Poorer people may be poisoned as well. In Cubatao, Brazil, 44% of workers have lung disease. The smog in Mexico City causes 100,000 pollution-related deaths each year. The city includes 16 million people, 3 million vehicles, and 33,000 factories. The poorest people live in constant danger from disease. This slum is Daravi in Bombay. Like medieval Florence or 19th century Manchester, it's overcrowded. Each family has 14 square meters of damp concrete floor space. The people are squatters, like third of all city dwellers in the south. Their shacks have electricity, but the council does not supply water. It's tapped from the mains by the people themselves. At least the water in New York is cleaner. Personally, I get no support whatsoever from the state. I have went through some drug problems. IRS yeah, has my got my bank account. They send you through so much nonsense. You need this. You got lights, you need that. TV, radio. Get this. Got Good hot job. water on the I make ten dollars a day. I do feel as if I've been let down by the system. Okay. In the last two seconds of our Earth Day, humans have changed the land, water, and atmosphere. The three life support systems. The range of species has declined with hunting and habitat loss. 170,000 square kilometers of tropical forests are now removed each year, and a total of 10% of their marine equivalent, coral reefs, have been destroyed. Human constructions have replaced diverse broadleaf woodlands in Europe and America. Around the world, wetlands have been drained for harbors or agriculture. Meanwhile, deserts expand at 60,000 square kilometers per year. There are millions of new animals, but they live with us on our terms, or on theirs. Escaped cats have destroyed whole seabird colonies in Antarctica. Changes to the physical Earth are much more important. Billions of gallons of water drive the agricultural systems of California's San Joaquin Valley. It travels 200 kilometers to improve the productivity of walnuts, cotton, or melons. So much water is used that the traces of salt within it build up to dangerous levels. Now the soil is collapsing and the trees are dying.
The more water that's sprayed, the worse the problem, until the land is poisoned. In California, it's the presence of trees that destroys the soil. For most of the world, tree loss has the same effect. In India, fuel wood collection exposes the soil and destroys its stability. The earth loses 24 billion tons of topsoil a year, decreasing the area of arable land. Water pollution is also a major problem. Canadian beluga whales are at the top of their food chain. Accumulated chemicals make them toxic waste. The chemicals can even be passed to young whales in milk fats. So with each generation, the concentration increases towards a damaging threshold, a biological threat far greater than any harpoon. The atmosphere has protected life for three billion years. In the last 100 years, carbon dioxide has increased 25% and sulfur dioxide is 15 times higher. Organic chlorine is unpicking the protective ozone layer, the Earth's spacesuit, and will for at least another 30 years. The astronaut is the pinnacle of human ingenuity, a combination of conquistador and mechanic funded by consumers with natural laws left behind. In space, it's midnight. The new day needs a new approach. The 21st century attitude creates opportunities to change human impact, combining technology and human biology in a positive way. Some things are unavoidable. Ozone loss and the greenhouse effect will reduce the global carrying capacity. Changes to the ocean currents will cause flooding in densely populated areas of Asia. Famine will strike Africa as population growth hits the wall of drought and soil erosion. But even now, the problems are being confronted. In the south, the target is population. The incentive for levelling the growth curve is an improved quality of life with fewer children. This song charts a Gambian village's history with a new verse for each birth. Reducing the desired family size from seven to three means better child health, not just economic growth. The benefits for the village are obvious, and the song now celebrates health and security, not numbers. Life in Daravi improved once the squatters gained some autonomy. A self-help cooperative builds apartments. The toilets are still shared, but that's the way to keep them clean. They fought the council for higher ceilings, to allow a sleeping gallery for children, and to lift life an inch above abject poverty. Human solutions can be bolstered by advances in technology. In the 1990s, energy wastage is a major problem. 
but it's easier to solve than reducing pollution at the power station. Efficiency can bring emissions down to counter the worldwide increase in demand and open new markets. Edison's light bulbs had hardly changed in over a hundred years. But with microfluorescent and radio light bulbs, electric light became efficient. With fiber optics, it became the center of communication technology. Computer Coursera. Dialing. Fiber optic cables can carry 300,000 digital quality calls simultaneously. Oh, hi, it's you. Yeah, can you confirm payment of account number Using four? networks reduces the need to commute, and yes. mass transport makes travel cleaner, yesterday. even in Los Angeles. But a metro that has to wait at traffic lights will never replace the convenience of a car. Given free rain, it can deliver. Cutting travel time and keeping cars in the suburbs balances the essential journeys. But mass transport has to be frequent and accessible. In 1992, the Tokyo Tube delivered 2.5 billion passengers. At Shinjuku Station, there's a train every two minutes at peak time. and it's all over in two hours. In Japan, long distance travel is cheaper and faster by train than by car. Road tolls penalize single occupants. Los Angeles struggles to keep its mighty freeways clear by encouragement with carpools and bus lanes. They're the only way to avoid the jams. In 2003, the gasoline engine will phase out. Emissions from new cars have to be 10% of the current level. Enter the hybrid electric car. This is the 1992 prototype with hydroelectric generation it's a water-powered car. Under 30 miles per hour, it uses the electric drive. Over 30, a combustion engine steps up the power. Acceleration stays electric and emissions stay low. There are purer fuels than petrol. Hydrogen is the cleanest. It produces water when it burns but it's highly explosive. Mazda cars use a special rotary engine to harness the explosions. In the fuel tank, the gas bonds chemically with a metal oxide. It simply won't explode until warm water releases it into the engine. Changing the trend of car design from speed to efficiency began in Japan. Since the 1950s, microcars attracted tax incentives from the government. As the designs evolved, they insisted on cleaner emissions or greater safety. The manufacturers argued for larger engines, 
from 360cc to 550 to 660, driving stronger bodies. A compromise created a market for efficient cars, supported by government subsidy and beautifully designed. Twenty-first century technology can really reduce human impact on the atmosphere. The industrial balance is also changing. In the 1980s, global military spending reached $1,000 billion a year and took almost a third of all research and development funds. As the 20th century death toll reached 110 million, the picture began to change. Dismantling the military started with the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, bringing the most dangerous weapons to a level of deterrence without the threat of global destruction. Achieving the peace dividend means subsidizing new production and refocusing research. It's a case of taking a different option and moving research and development into use and waste. Recycling is second nature to poor people. Dharavi has a plastics recycling industry. But manufacturers could also be responsible for disposal. Plastic recycling cuts waste. Aluminium recycling uses 5% of the energy of normal production. Steel recycling creates 85% less air pollution than steel making. There's work inside societies hit by unemployment funded by reducing the use of imported raw materials. A different philosophy applies to plantation crops, tobacco, coffee and cocoa. Do we need to give them up? You know, I used to smoke a pack of cigarettes a day, but one day I just decided that I definitely needed to give it up, so, so I did. It's not that easy, though. I mean, I have a tremendous love for candy. Chocolate is not easy to give up. I have to have not it at least. Chocolate. Not just chocolate, though, Peter. It's sugars and everything. Donuts, cakes, I have to have everything. Well, I can't give up coffee. I mean, I have like a cup in the morning and then another one, and then by the middle of the day, you're, you're shaking. And, you know, like, My big downfall, you know, is like fast food. I get home from work and you're tired, and why do you want to cook when you can do, get a nice, big, juicy pizza? The 21st century citizens value water. In 1992, each Briton produced 40 gallons of polluted water a day, and sewage was dumped into the sea. Now, the waste can be collected, treated, and freeze-dried. The water is clean. The solids produce a useful, safe fertilizer. Industrial pollution requires a different approach. New planning laws that dictate that outfalls must be upstream of inlets. That way, a factory dumping pollutants gets a polluted supply, an incentive to clean up. It's part of a new approach that makes water protection biological, not bureaucratic. Water conservation is the basis of new agriculture. Requirements are measured and delivered by drip irrigation, with just 5% evaporation loss. The most sophisticated drip irrigation systems are completely underground. 
Only their effect can be seen. In India, water conservation has very simple rules. Prevent rainfall runoff by planting sisal or digging catch pits. Prevent soil erosion by lining gullies with rocks. These retain the topsoil and silt and the crops increase. This scheme uses plants from a government nursery, but is run by the villagers. Here in Gandhi Grama, improving crop yields reduces human impact. Preserving the Earth's variety of species, its biodiversity, also needs a new approach. Rhinos are an extreme case. Between 1970 and 1990, 85% of the population was poached for horn. Some of the survivors live in an unreal world. They're not extinct, but they're also not viable. They live in the wild, but they are imprisoned overnight. Golden lion tamarins are Brazil's equivalent. The population of 450 includes zoo bred animals that wear radio collars and have scientists in attendance. Despite intense human population pressure, they're technically surviving. It's now recognized that biodiversity is in human hands, and harvesting can provide better protection for whole habitats than building a wall around one species. Belém Market in the Brazilian rainforest shows the fruits of diversity medicines as well as food. Collecting Brazil nuts can earn as much as logging without the damage. It's the variety of plant and animal genes that is the key to biodiversity. They're the planet's last untapped resource. Biotechnology aims to develop new crops by decoding and manufacturing genes collected from the wild. Peasant farmers meet a multi-billion dollar business head on. It's a classic case for the 21st century approach. Without a mutual stewardship of these resources, it could be disastrous. The South has a new agriculture. An Indian areca garden is a good example. Like a rainforest, it has layers. A ground cover of cardamom and pineapple, a middle story of banana, and a canopy of areca palms with black pepper creepers. The garden is on common land, and the villagers benefit from the cash crops and the other produce.
Even the husks provide enough fuel for the house. In fact, energy use is the classic example of 21st century thinking. Technology, tradition, and low impact. In India, some villages have collected leaves and dead wood from protected forests for centuries, without any felling. In others, fast-growing imported species, acacias and eucalyptus, are grown to be harvested as fuel. The leaves are left to protect and fertilize the soil. The wood chips are burnt in a locally built gasifier. The gas given off drives a hybrid diesel or gas generator. In Britain, the trees are willows. They grow to four meters in 18 months. This is a 21st century, low impact energy source. As it has grown, this wood has sucked carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. When it burns, the gas returns to the cycle but with the coppice still thriving, this doesn't increase the carbon pollution. Each hectare is the energy equivalent of four and a half tons of coal. Natural energy is also easier to tap with new technology. The Rantz Tidal Barrage in France started generating clean electricity in 1966. A tidal fall of 13 meters is enough to produce 600 million kilowatt hours of electricity a year. Energy costing that includes nuclear waste disposal and coal desulfurization makes this cheap electricity. In Japan, a prototype wave power station was built into the Sakata breakwater. Air is compressed in the hollow sections of what could be a complete power station and fed through an air turbine to produce a constant current. Conventional wind turbines cover the hillside at Tehachapi, California. There are 5,137 turbines placed on the wind contours on both slopes of the hill. In 1992, Tehachapi produced 1.1 billion kilowatt hours of electricity, 25% of the total wind power for the United States. The biggest turbines can generate 250 kilowatts. These are a new form of heavy engineering, built in old shipyards. Harnessing sunlight is the purest, most biological form of electricity generation. These mirror arrays focus sunlight onto a matte black oil-filled tube with the flow controlled by computer. Brett, your 2A north field is 100% in the sun. Okay, we might have to adjust the flows here a little bit if that sun gets a little more intense. Then four. The oil goes into the field at 50 Celsius and comes back at 390 to superheat steam in a turbine. Go ahead. Yeah, can you take that Myra now and uh, check out that storage tank, please? Careful. 
These fields can generate 45 megawatts in an hour. In a year, the site produces 100 million kilowatt hours of electricity. It needs minimal maintenance and is pollution free, which reduces the cost per unit dramatically. With the power plants in place, upgrading the generating system is simple. The next step is photovoltaic. Photovoltaic solar panel is the nearest thing to a man-made leaf. When light falls on a thin semiconductor wafer, it excites electrons that can move through the crystal structure to generate electricity. Panels can be mass-produced using cheap, off-grade silicon. But in the south, maintenance is difficult and more appropriate technology is needed. Suganahali village has its own electricity to provide lighting and clean water and reduce fuel wood collection. Their generator is more reliable than grid electricity and cheaper because the fuel is cow dung. Each family contributes and has an account. Rotting dung gives off methane, collected in 7,000 litre gas holders, which like the rest of the plant are made locally using village labour. The gas replaces diesel in a hybrid generator. The slurry is still excellent fertilizer. If wanted, it's returned to the families. This is biological solar power. Chlorophyll converts light energy into cellulose. Bacteria in the cow's stomach break it down to produce meat, milk, fertilizer, and electricity. Moving human cultures towards the 21st century attitude isn't difficult. It simply requires a diverse human approach. Fortunately, increasing choice and valuing humans stimulates new markets and technologies. Throughout the late 20th century, environmentalists called for individual action. But history is shaped by people in power. Mr. Major, Around the world, governments already have and regularly use the mechanisms to rebalance their economies. Combining the dynamic forces of biology and human ingenuity into a new attitude, we can change the world. The price of doing the same old thing is far higher than the price of change.